The DS3 may very well have been created to describe the word cabriolet, French for a car that resembles a coupe but has a folding top. The root word cabriolet means to skip lightly or caper about, which seems rather appropriate in this context. There was a time when you would hop on board a boat and spend several weeks out at sea if you wanted to go overseas. You'd also have to put pen to paper if you wanted to write a letter to your love. So sure, today it is way more easier and more convenient to send an email, fly in an aeroplane, send a text message. But it seems like we've lost that sense of occasion. That romantic message in a bottle notion is all but lost. Luckily we have the French, who seem to be able to add bubble to any occasion. Fresh air flowing into the cockpit is one of the pleasures of driving a ragtop, but managing that airflow is a big challenge for engineers. Impressively, they've managed to obtain a drag coefficient identical to that of the hatchback and created a cabin that is all but buffet free. You know what I'm loving about driving the Citroen Cabrio is that it's a DS3. You actually forget just how awesome this car is. And that's been the consensus on launch. All the journalists are saying, wow, this car is really, really good. The things we loved about the DS3 when it came out was obviously the styling. Super individualized, quirky, funky, head turning. It was a great drive as well, sporty, dynamic, that fantastic little 1.6 turbo engine, the top spec. And it wasn't overly firmly sprung either, which made it such a good drive. It also was fairly practical. You could fit five people in sort of at a squeeze, but the boot was really impressive. 245 liters when you compare it to its main competitor, Mini. Now, has all of that been lost because they've gone topless? Well, no, what they've done is they've gone back in time, really. The 2CV, as we know from Citroen, had that sliding roof, so did the Plurial, and this is what they've incorporated into the DS3. Why it works? You don't lose any of the styling cues. They're still there. You don't lose any of the space because you don't have this big roof that you've got to pack away. The safety elements are there because the B pillar is still here. So these are things they've really gone and thought about. But what makes this roof so interactive as well is that while you're cruising at a speed of 120 kilometers an hour, you can open that roof. That is pretty cool. While convertible rivals like the Mini Cooper gain around 100 kilos over the standard hatch, the DS3 Cabrio has only put on an additional 25. It also scores when it comes to space, with the boot swallowing an impressive 245 litres of luggage. They've had to come up with some quirky design elements though to incorporate this new style. How does the boot open? Well, what they've done is it's flipped out and raised up. It is pretty tricky getting things in, because let's be honest, the entrance is super, super tiny and narrow, but once inside, you've got really class leading space. It's all in threes, really. The three engines that we know, and they've got the little 1.23 cylinder entry level, they've got the 1.6, and of course the one that we in the VTI 55, which is at 1.6 litre turbo, and it is still brilliant to drive. A couple of other little fun things they've added. First time ever that they've brought out 3D rear lights with the DS logo integrated into it. So it really is that French flair that they're bringing to the party, as always. But they really are pushing the whole lifestyle element of owning a Citroen really hard. So they've actually launched the DS Privilege Club, which is about events, lifestyles, discount on hotels, clothing. So so the minute you buy a DS, you fit into this exclusive club. They really have tried to sweeten the deal in terms of owning a Citroen with their buyback policy they've brought into place. From a pricing perspective, you're looking at paying about 20,000 Rand more to go the DS3 Cabrio route. The top spec, you're looking at 292,000, but it's the entry level that starts at 219. That's going to get people talking, but there are a couple of extras that you need to add to that list, which will probably bump that price up to around the 237 mark. But I think for me, the big seller is going to be that 1.6. Not everybody wants to be tearing around in a turbocharged car, loving the drive. I know I certainly do, but I see that that is uh, definitely going to be their volume driver. Driving around Cape Town, having a panoramic roof that allows a bit of wind to buffet your hair. It really is a special experience, but for me, the fact that it hasn't lost any of that individual taste and flair is what makes such a good car. You can still choose five different colors. The yellow and the gray are obviously unique to the sports version, the top spec that we're in, and then your interiors, lots of choices there again. So DS3 really is about pushing boundaries. That hasn't changed. Going this route with the roof really works. Not really topless, is it? Shall we rather say it's a glorious nipple slip? 
But one thing that is really cool about having a sliding cabrio style roof over a traditional convertible is that the styling cues of the DS3 are still there. The safety is there with the B pillars, the boot space is there, and the drive is still as dynamic as ever. It is distinctive, it is desirable, it is dynamic. She is a goddess.